Oh, hello. I don't see this thing saying, oh, it's a send light. Yay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Rocio, one of the group moderators and resident writing coach on Cassie's team. Thank you for joining me. If you're listening live, please let me know where you're tuning in from in the comments. And if you are watching the replay, please go ahead and um, drop a hashtag team replay so that we know who's watching. Today, I'm going to talk about something very important, three key elements in turning 2020 around. Today, I'm going to use the quotation marks <laughs> and lay the foundation for a better 2021 for us. So, oh, those are my kids. I don't know if you can hear them screaming. <laughs> Having fun. So, I'm not trying to freak you out uh, with the next uh, sentence that I'm going to throw out there. Please brace yourselves if you need that um, before I remind you that we have 72 full days left in 2020 breathe just wait <laughs> i have good stuff that's gonna help us with that um and of course these 72 days include many holidays many birthdays for some of us um 11 presidential elections worldwide and plenty of other important governmental elections as well so add to all of this the personal stuff that we need to take care of um the matters that we have to deal with because of our own backgrounds in our own environment and on top of that uh everything work related and you know family related so it's a lot and so this level up life is all about how do we make the best out of this um as we get ready to end the year i want us to have some things in mind how to make the best out of the next few weeks pre-2021 how do we go from surviving to thriving is that even possible? <laughs> um, and I will submit that yes, it is. And in, in this level up blog, I'm gonna give you three key elements in doing and going through this process. So to turn it around and lay the good foundation. A question that you may have is right now, um, with so much uncertainty, what can we do? And if there's one thing that I have personally learned uh, via my chronic illness, I have a highly variable autoimmune neuromuscular disorder called my spina gravis, it's a mouthful. <laughs> I can talk about it later. Um, this is something that can, and, and actually I've done it myself and I've seen many others do it. And yes, we can do it. And it, and it really is all about having flexible planning and also recentering more than once. And so I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna warn you that it is painful at first, particularly for used to being in control. Um, and some of us are very much in that, uh, in that or where at some point in that area, but it is totally doable. So bear with me. Now, I've been using the quotation marks every time I say today, trying to anyway intentionally, because it's a very important word in the context, in this context of this level of life in particular, for two reasons. Number one is that um, today is really a practice that we need to implement as often as we need to, not just today, and not only at the end of a very stressful year. Um, so it's something that we can reuse and recycle. Recycle, reuse. And the other reason is that we first have to reassess and honor the where and the when, so the today in our lives, um, whether it's the political scene that we are uh, facing or about to face, whether it's the time in our semester, you know, some of us, we have a, an academic audience for the most part, so it could be uh, a semester, it could be a quarter, and also the season of life that we are uh, living. So let's jump in and talk about the three key elements of turning 2020 around today and lay the foundation for a better 2021 for us. Key element number one is going to be get your bearings. Now we have to answer super basic questions and then dig deeper over and over. And so those basic questions are gonna be what, when, where, who, and why. When we are asking these questions, we want to start you know, in a comfortable place and then keep asking and keep going deeper. So what do I want to accomplish? Very simple question. Um, for some of us, especially if you have your goals, if not, then that forces you to start talking about those or writing about those. And then more, more importantly, as you dig deeper, you want to start asking, okay, yes, what do I want to accomplish? But also, what do I want to feel as I am on my way to accomplishing XYZ goals for the next 72 days? Um, also for the when, for example, when in my season of life am I, where my semester or my quarter? etc in my living and also am i savoring that when when it's happening where am i geographically professionally emotionally we have to be aware of all these things and where do i want to go and that's something that we need to keep asking ourselves who am i that's a basic question that's also very um sometimes you know it's hard to answer depending on what you're living and so i want you to start with who i am and then take it a step further and say who do i want to become and dig deeper, as deep as you can go. And lastly, why? 
Why do I want to do what I do in every aspect of our lives? Like I said, we have an academic audience, but really being an academic, being a scholar is not just the books, not just the writing. It's the person also, and it's the identity of that person. And so we have to keep this in mind and ask, why do we do what we do? Um, what do we teach? What do we publish? Why do we care about social justice? Why do we do anything and dig deep? So that was key element number one. Now let's jump into key element number two. We are going to have to redefine things, <laughs> redefine concepts, redefine relationships. And that that takes a little bit of exercise, um, but I think it's it's something that if we get into this practice, it's, it's a lot easier down the road. So let's redefine for ourselves um, what is thriving? What does it really mean? Yeah, flourishing and prospering, but why and in, in to accomplish what? And at the core of redefining this, you know, this idea of not surviving but thriving or, you know, anything you want to redefine as you are in this journey of setting yourself um, and for a good base for 2021, at the core of these things are going to be number one, your priorities, of course, and number two, rest and restoring. Now, we can talk a lot about, and actually we do in our programs, um, we talk a lot about the relationship between creating and restoring. And I know Kathy has shared some uh, free material and I'm gonna put the link in the comments about um, how this is a relationship that feeds itself and it's almost, it's almost like a cycle. And so the bottom line is that we need to revise our priorities, allowing the time we need to rest and restore so that we can truly thrive under our own conditions of why we want to accomplish what we want to accomplish. And it all ties back to, again, the priorities and the rest and restoring. That was key element number two. Now let's move on to key element number three. And this one is a fun one because it's going to be a challenge as well for you. <laughs> so let's talk about key element number three. Key element number three, give yourself permission to pause and at times reflect. So it's a two part. So this is going to tie very well with the previous point because it stresses the importance of restoring, pausing, sometimes even reflecting, which are not all the same. And this key element also really helps with many things from overcommitting. If you pause, you are a little more likely to not just say yes uh, the first time that somebody asks you for joining some ex committee that you really don't want to. Um, it, prevent, it helps you not overcommitting. It also stops you from being overwhelmed. Um, even if it's just a little bit and down the road, it also prevents burnout. And that's something that we have to have present because we may not know it, we may not feel it. And then when it happens, that's when we're like, oh my God, what do I do? So pause, you have permission to do it. You have my permission to do it. You have Kathy's permission and Gina's permission. You need to give yourself that permission. It needs to be part of your own modus operandi. You have to do it. And so here's the challenge. I'm going to give you permission to pause. And you know that. Uh, and the question is, will you give it to yourself? If you accept this challenge, and here I'm picturing Mr. Uh, Gadget, which I only saw it in Spanish, because <laughs> that's I grew up in Peru, Lima, Peru. So I can picture Mr. Gadget saying, accept this challenge. You're going to accept this challenge. I really want you to do that. Um, and I want you to do one of the following things that I'm going to list here in the next few minutes, or in the next minute or so. And if you don't take that challenge, you don't take one of those items, that's okay. You can come up with your own and you can put it in the comments and we can actually have a bank of ideas and feed each other how to pause. So I'm going to ask you for this challenge to take 10 minutes every day. And I know it sounds scary, but remember it, it's only 10 minutes in a day. And if, if you really need to, you can break it down into five and five. That's okay. Um, but also keep in mind, if, if we find it daunting and hard to take 10 minutes a day, we have to reassess our priorities and how we're looking at life because 10 minutes is really not that much. And we have to remind ourselves kindly of that. It feels like uh, it's a lot of time, but we have to tell ourselves it's only 10 minutes. Let's break it down. 10 minutes every day to do one of the following. And I'm going to put the list also in the comments just so you have it accessible. Um, one of the challenges is to listen to music and dance like nobody's watching. And that's one of my favorite things. That's why it's at the top <laughs> because I love, and truthfully, I just dance like nobody's watching all the time. It doesn't matter <laughs> where I am. Um, but now it's more convenient because we're, you know, some of us have the luxury of being at home, working from home. So we can do that. And really nobody's going to be watching unless we do it in, you know, in front of Zoom or Facebook Live. <laughs> and then the next challenge or the next, um, 
The next thing to do could be take a nice bath or shower, picturing that you are in a spa. So the whole 10 minutes you're gonna be doing this. And if it takes you five minutes, that's fine. I don't want you to waste extra water. Maybe a bath is better for this particular point. Um, the next one is gonna be to intentionally be without electronics, social media, and email. This 10 minutes, it's really not that much if we think about it, particularly for this point, right? So let's do that. The next one is gonna be to invest 10 minutes of your time when you're eating a meal, practicing practicing mindful eating. And you know, even if if you start just savoring the food that you have and eating very slowly, um, maybe you can want to pay attention to the flavors and the scents and all these things and just the textures. So 10 minutes. And if you want to do five for lunch and five for dinner, that's okay too. 10 minutes for journaling, it's another way to do it. 10 minutes to go for a walk. And it doesn't have to be a walk anywhere. It could just be a walk even in your backyard in circles or in front, you know, coming in and out of the house. Um, you choose what you want to do, but you're going to pause everything you're doing and just walk 10 minutes. Sit down and breathe for 10 minutes. And I actually have a dear friend and colleague who likes to do this for a few minutes a day. And she puts her yoga mat down on the floor and that's what she does. And, and that feeds her soul. And I love that. 10 minutes to meditate and 10 minutes to exercise. So I give you a few ideas here. That's the challenge, 10 minutes every day to do one of these. And if you cannot do these and you have other ideas, please, please put them in the comments. That way we can actually share a bank of ideas. Um, and that way we can give each other permission to pause, give ourselves permission to pause. That's really the most important thing. So before I summarize, I just want to repeat that we need to pause and ask ourselves, how do we make the most out of the next few weeks pre 2021? For that, we need to redefine some concepts. For that, we need to reassess our priorities. For that, we need to increase our agency to make decisions that center both rest and restoring and priorities. And so all of these items are going to help us prioritize and focus, and we can create both a career and the lives that we want because that's the ultimate goal. Now, in this short life, uh, that was actually pretty short. Yay, 12 minutes. <laughs> we talked about the three key elements in turning 2020 around today and lay the foundation for a better 2021 for us. And those are number one, get our bearings, uh, where we're going to answer some basic questions and we're going to dig deeper. The uh, key element number two is redefine. We're going to redefine some concepts and it doesn't only apply to the concepts of, you know, like thriving. It also, th the main point is that how do we honor um, the relationship of creating and restoring in our lives? How do we practice these relationships? How do we prioritize them? And key element number three was give yourself permission to pause. Give ourselves permission to pause. You have mine. The question is, will you have yours? You have a challenge uh, for point number three, and you can rewind and go over the prompts that I gave you 10 minutes a day. Don't forget that. And before I go, I just wanted to let you know that our team is revising the curriculum for one of our dear programs called Navigate Your Writing Roadmap. And this program actually is super cool, and it ties very well with this slide because it actually can help you turn around 2020 and make 2021 the year that you can take control of your career through writing and publishing. And that's kind of important for our audience for all of us. <laughs> so you've been getting Kathy's emails um, with the link to watch these level up lives, then you're set because that means you're going to be, um, you're going to get the email when we start sending them in a few weeks about how to get onto the waiting, waiting list for this particular course. Uh, however, and you know, more details on the course as well. But if you're not getting any of the emails, uh, then what you need to do is go and download our free PDF that's uh, for a cheat sheet that's called 10 ways to make time to write. So it's super useful. And once you get that PDF, you will put your email address and that'll get you in the um, in the list so that we can actually get that email about this awesome course. I'm gonna put that link in the comments as well um, where you can get this PDF just in case you don't have it. And with that, I'm gonna say, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for being here in this Level Up Life. Be safe, be well, and I hope you have a really good rest of the day. I'll talk to you later, bye.